As we have seen in recent weeks, when God, when he rebukes us, it is incredibly important that we heed his rebuke. That means it is important for us to listen to his rebuke and then move in repentance. We are to live in repentance. Repentance, that is not forgiveness. That is us turning away from the way that was unrighteous, the way of sin, and moving in the manner that God has instructed us to move in so that we can live in a manner that is holy and righteous in the eyes of God. Here in our lesson this week, we take a look at another rebuke from Amos, the prophet Amos. This rebuke, we'll see that it serves as a warning for Israel, but not just for Israel, it serves as a warning for the world today. You see, what happens when one chooses to ignore, chooses to disregard the rebuke of the Lord? That is what we're gonna be taking a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week. As our lesson, it opens up there in the 14th verse here, as we take a look at the book of Amos. Our lesson, it opens up with the Lord saying through the prophet, seek good and not evil. Keep that in mind, seek good and not evil. This again is part of God's rebuke for Israel. It's also a rebuke for us today. But again, we see there in the 14th verse, the Lord says, seek good and not evil that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you. Again, Israel, they are to seek good here. As we see that God, he desires to be in fellowship with Israel. And again, this serves as a rebuke, not just for Israel, it serves as a rebuke for the world today. Something that we must understand is that the Lord, he desires to live in fellowship with mankind. He wants to be in a relationship with mankind. But again, the question that we must answer, a question that I have shared with all of you recently as well is, we have to choose for ourselves. Will we live in fellowship with the Lord? The Lord, as I said in a recent sermon, he desires to enter into our home. He desires to sit down at our table. He desires to eat with us, but will we invite him into our home? Will we sit down at the table with him and will we eat with him? Again, God said to Israel there in the 14th verse, he said, seek good, he said, and not evil. Understand, if you choose to seek evil, if you choose to live in wickedness, the Lord will not dwell with you. God will not be in a fellowship. He will not be in a relationship with you. God, he does not abide with evil. The Lord, he does not abide with wickedness. The Lord, he does not abide with sin. So in order for you to dwell in fellowship with the Lord and for the Lord to dwell in fellowship with you, you must put away sin from you. God, he has no sin with him. The Lord, he is benevolent. The Lord, he is holy and righteous. He is perfect. That means that he is without sin. You yourself, if you desire to be in fellowship with the Lord, you must be without sin. You must strive to live in a manner that again, he's the instructions of God so that you can become holy and righteous. So that again, you can live in fellowship with him. Now we'll see there in the 15th verse, that the Lord, he said to Israel, as he continues here, he said through the prophet, hate evil, love good. He said there establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. So let us understand that this is a clear rebuke from the Lord. Again, there are steps to forgiveness, right? There is a rebuke from the one who has been sinned against then there is the one who has committed the sin. They should heed that rebuke. They should live in repentance. That means that they should live in a manner that will correct the wrong that they have done. And when they have earned that forgiveness from the one that they have wronged, when they have proved that they are turning away from the way in which was wrong, then the one who was wrong should forgive them. God, again, we see here, he has rebuked. The clear rebuke here, it shows that Israel, they were not living in a manner that was holy and righteous, right? It shows that Israel was living in a manner that was evil. Again, God, he said there, hate evil, love good. Israel was living in a manner in which they loved what was evil and they despised what was good there. He said there in the 15th verse again, 
establish justice at the gate or in the gate there. This scripture, it reminds me of what is said in the book of Isaiah. You can find this in the 59th chapter of Isaiah and the 14th verse, where the scripture there, it speaks to the fact that justice was not present in the land. The scripture, it speaks to the fact that no one called for justice, nor did anyone plead for the truth. The scripture there says that the people trusted empty words and they spoke lies. They conceived evil and they brought forth iniquity. So again, let us understand that, that what we see here in Amos, this has been going on in Israel, the Northern Kingdom for, for quite some time to where they, rather than despising what was evil and what was wicked, they were indulging in what was evil. They were indulging in what was wicked. They were indulging in sin. Rather than seeking the truth, the people, they were being deceived and they were living for the lies. That reminds me of the world in which we live in today. Well, rather than seeking the holy truth, seeking the truth that is divine, we heed the lies of those that go around and love to deceive. As I said in a recent sermon, many of us, rather than allowing the Lord to enter into our homes, we allow everything but the Lord to enter into our homes. Rather than allowing the divine truth to enter into our homes and to sit at our table, we allow the liar to sit at our table. And I'm talking about spiritually here. We, rather than seeking out the word of God, we'll sit at our computers, we'll open up our tablets or our phones, and we'll seek out every conspiracy, every lie, and we'll soak all of that in, rather than digesting and consuming the word of God. Israel, during that time, rather than, again, looking for and doing what was just, doing what was holy and righteous, We'll see that no one called for justice and no one pleaded for the truth. The people, they heeded again, empty words, and they spoke lies. So God has given his rebuke and the rebuke is clear. The question that Israel now must answer is, will they turn away from evil? Will they turn away from wickedness? Will they turn away from the lies and the deceptions and will they turn to the word of God? This again is a same rebuke that has been given to the world as the Lord still calls on repentance today. He calls on repentance through the pastor, through the preacher, through the one who goes out and is an evangelist. The Lord, he has sent this message of repentance through all of his children that are out in the world, that are participating, taking part in the great commission. God has called on the world to turn away from sin and to turn to him. Will the world heed his rebuke? What happens when one heeds the rebuke of the Lord? When you live in obedience, you will be blessed. But what happens when one chooses to disregard the word of God? When one chooses to be disobedient, when one chooses to indulge in sin, as we have seen all of this quarter, we know that when one chooses to live in disobedience, we know that in no way the Lord will bless them. That is what we see here in our lesson this week. As we continue on there, down in the 18th verse, we'll see the prophet say, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. For what good is the day of the Lord? Could you imagine desiring the day of the Lord? Well, you have to understand what the day of the Lord actually is, but no one should actually desire the day of the Lord. You see, the day of the Lord, that is reserved for the sinner. The day of the Lord is when the Lord will judge sin. And at the day of the Lord, when the Lord judges sin, I want you to understand that nobody can be saved that day. See, at the day of the Lord, God is going to cast sin. The Lord is going to cast the convicted sinner away from him for eternity. And some may think that, hey, being cast away from the Lord, being cast away from religion, being cast away from faith, not having to deal with it, not having to put up with it. You know, some people desire that today. Some people 
they desire to be done with God. And they may think that being done with the Lord is an incredible reward. But as Amos shows us here in scripture today, the day of the Lord is not a beautiful thing. It is not a pretty picture. As we see here, as we take a look at the 18th verse, where the prophet again says that the day, the day of the Lord will be darkness and not light. That does not sound like a good thing to me. We'll see the prophet say there in the 19th verse, again, describing the day of the Lord, the prophet says, it will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and then a serpent bit him. We'll see the prophet say there in the 20th verse, is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? You see, it sounds like the day of the Lord, it sounds like that day sounds like trouble is on every side and that there is no escaping the trouble. Yeah, you can run from the lion, but there's a bear waiting you. Are you gonna try to run one way or the other and think that you can escape? You may try to hide in the house away from the bear and from the lion, and you may lean your hand onto the wall, but when you do that, there's a serpent there to bite you. The day of the Lord sounds like trouble is on every side. And the bad part about this, the worst part about this, with trouble being on every side, is that there won't be a helping hand from God that will pull you out of that trouble. We live in a world today where, as Paul said, we are hard pressed on every side as sincere believers. But even though we are hard pressed on every side, Paul said that we are not crushed. The reason why we are not crushed is because God is present and our faith in the Lord, the Almighty, it has saved us. But if you don't believe in the Lord, and if you are cast away from his presence for eternity, who is going to save you? Your money won't be there to save you. The power that you think that you have in the world today, it won't be there to save you. Nobody will be there to save you. The day of the Lord, it will be a terrible day. Now, as we continue on here down in the 21st verse, we'll see that God's rebuke, it, it becomes a warning here where we'll see that the Lord says there in the 21st verse that he hated and despised Israel trying to observe the holy feast and, and gather together for worship. We'll see there in the 22nd verse that the Lord speaks to how even though they would offer up sacrifices, he would not accept any offering of any kind from Israel. Now, if you're familiar with the first chapter of the book of Isaiah, what Amos is saying here, what the Lord is saying here through Amos, it sounds very similar to what the Lord said through the prophet Isaiah, where the Lord said that he was done with Israel's futile sacrifices, that, that he was done with their offerings, that they do not please him. And the reason why those offerings did not please him is because they were more co committed to living in sin. Their hearts were, were given to living in sin rather than living for the Lord. So the Lord said, I have no part. I want no part with your offerings. I want no part with your, your, your sacrifices. I want no part with you gathering together, trying to keep the holy feast when your heart is not for me, but your heart is for living in sin. Don't come to me, the Lord was saying, if you are committed to living in sin. This is again a rebuke. It served as a rebuke for Israel. It serves as a rebuke for all of us today for the world as well. If your heart is committed to sin and then you try to show up to church to worship, the Lord still has nothing to do with you. It does no good for you to come to worship if your heart is committed for sin and not for the Lord. We'll see that the Lord says there in the 23rd verse, he said to Israel to take away from him the noise of their song for he would not listen to it. Again, Israel was trying to worship the Lord, but their hearts were, were committed to living in sin. Are you today, are you trying to worship the Lord, but your heart is not committed to him? Do you really think that your worship of the Lord, do you really think your worship of the Lord pleases him if your heart is committed to sin and not committed to him? If you think that way, I say to you today, think again. We'll see there in the 24th verse, 
that the correction, it becomes very clear here as to again, what the Lord desired for Israel, where he plainly says there, he says, let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Again, the rebuke is clear here. What is it that the Lord desires out of Israel? Again, as we saw in the opening in the 14th verse there, the Lord desires for Israel to seek good and not evil. He desires, as we saw there in the 15th verse, for Israel to hate evil and to love good. He desired for Israel to live in a manner that was holy and righteous, rather than allowing injustice to spread throughout that land, the Lord desired for justice to have rule in the land, justice. He desired for what was right, what was good to have rule in the land. But something that I said recently, and I'll say it again here today is, how can we allow good to have rule in the land when we don't know what good actually is? This is a very concerning problem for me in the world today, where many people are struggling to know what is good. Many people are struggling to make a distinction between what is good and what is evil. Many who are of the church today are willing to follow what is evil rather than what is good. How can you, one who professes to be a believer, follow what is sinful, what is evil, and what is wicked? How can you, as one who professes to be a child of God, not be able to discern, spiritually discern, what is holy and righteous from what is evil and wicked? Again, if you're struggling to discern that spiritually, again, it's time for you to meditate in your heart on what it is that you are choosing to follow, what it is that you're choosing to live in obedience to. The Lord in his rebuke, he desired for Israel to live in obedience to the word of him, the word of God. Israel was choosing to live in obedience to sin. What about you today? The Lord desires for you to live in obedience to the word of God. But many of us today, we are choosing to live in obedience to sin. Will you choose to live in repentance? That is a question that all of us, we must answer today. And I hope that your answer will be to live in repentance. Turn away from sin, turn to the word of God, heed the word of God, and you heed the word of God by living according to the word of God. Now we'll see there in the 25th verse, the Lord, he asked, did they offer him sacrifices? Then in the 26th verse, the Lord, he pointed out that the forefathers that they, yeah, they tried to offer up sacrifices, but at the same time, we'll see there that the Lord said that they tried to serve idols as well. And so the Lord, he said there in the 26th verse that what Israel tried to do back then was what Israel was doing at that present time. So did the sinful actions of Israel's forefathers, did it work out for them when they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years? Nope, it didn't. Their forefathers, they passed away in the wilderness while that younger generation that we spoke of and studied about earlier in this quarter of our lessons, that younger generation, they went with Joshua across the Jordan and into the promised land to, to take the promised land. That older generation, they didn't do that. They died in the wilderness. So if it didn't work for that older generation, why would that present generation that was living sinfully, why would they think that they could serve idols, serve sin? Why did they think that they can do that and then serve the Lord at the same time and that it would work out for them? If it didn't work out for their forefathers, it certainly wouldn't work out for them. Lesson for us today. If it didn't work out for Israel during those times, serving sin today and then trying to serve the Lord at the same time, I want you to understand it's not going to work for you. You have a choice to make. As we saw Joshua say, you have a choice to make. Will you choose to serve the Lord or will you choose to serve sin? I hope for you today that you would choose to serve the Lord rather than be a servant of sin. Now we'll see there in the final verse of our lesson here today, there in the 27th verse where the Lord, he leaves Israel with one more warning. Should they have continued to indulge in sin, the Lord, he warned that he would send them into captivity beyond Damascus. 
The warning for us today, I want you to understand that there is a warning to where if you choose to disregard God's rebuke, the rebuke that he gave the world through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, where Jesus came, he rebuked us. He told us that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But if we choose, we can follow him. And if we follow him, his way, his instructions, Jesus said that we will not perish, but we will have everlasting life. If we choose to disregard that though, the warning is that we will be ca carried away in captivity. That captivity, I want you to understand, it's not gonna last just 70 years like it did for those who are of the Southern Kingdom. That captivity, it will be eternal to where the sinner, as we've seen today, will be convicted of their sins and they will be cast away from the Lord for eternity. And I want you to understand that being cast away from the Lord for eternity, it's not going to be a pretty picture because as we've seen today, trouble will be on every side and there will be no one to save the sinner from their troubles when God is no longer present for them. When they are cast away from his presence for all of eternity, that is the second death, the spiritual death, to where there will be no joy, there will be no peace, there will be no happiness, there will be no contentment, there will be nothing but suffering, where many will live in regret, they will know that they could have had that eternal peace. They will know that they could have had that eternal joy, but they will also know that they chose to turn it down and they will live in suffering because they will have known that they rejected the Lord and now they are living without him. And there will be no saving from that. Do you desire the day of the Lord? I hope that you don't. That is God's rebuke. That is the warning that he had for Israel. That is God's rebuke. That is the warning that he has for all of us today. And I hope that you heed his rebuke. And I hope today that you will choose. If you haven't done so already, I hope that you will choose to live in correction, that you will choose to live in repentance so that you can take part in God's heavenly kingdom where there will be eternal peace, happiness, eternal joy. What will you choose today? Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon, or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.